Are you a service-based business and you're struggling to price your work? Well, today I'm gonna to be teaching you three strategies in order to price your work via either space or time. So for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Jack Churchman and I'm the owner of Cut Crew Limited. We're a commercial grounds maintenance business operating in East Midlands, Milton Keynes and Bedfordshire. If you watch our weekly video series, Behind the Blade, then you already know what we get up to on the week. However, today's video is not about that. One of the most asked questions we get on the channel is, Jack, how do you price work? So yes, this video is tailored to the gardening slash grounds maintenance industry. However, it can be adapted to any service-based industry out out there such as plumbers bricklayers or anything like that because we're simply delving into the costs of our business and working out via time or space so without further ado let's get on with the video Okay, so as mentioned before, we've developed a spreadsheet in order to us to nail down our pricing strategies, whether we are using space or time to give our clients a quote. So let's jump straight on now to the laptop and show you what we've developed. Okay, so first and foremost, here's a couple of rules to this spreadsheet. Everything in green is what we can edit and everything in orange I've developed formulas which should change for the stuff you input in the green. And also, if you just look down the bottom here, we can see we've got time and space, and that's either space per square meters or space per acres, but I will explain that later on in the video. It's pretty self-explanatory, however, they do have some things that need explaining fairly in depth. Okay, so as you can see here on the left-hand side, I've got my fixed costs. Now my fixed costs are gonna be stuff that aren't gonna change over the duration of the year. Stuff like my public liability insurance, my phone bill, my website bills, my van insurance, my truck insurance, kit insurance, any vehicle leasing or asset finance. And as you can see, I've entered them here on the left. Stuff on the right is our variable costs. Variable cost, this is obviously stuff that can change. So the stuff that I've put in variable cost is things like fuel, worker wages. So I've got worker one, worker two, and the director's wage, and also maintenance. Now that maintenance could either be property maintenance or equipment maintenance anything that could vary and also sometimes what i like to do is put ad hoc costs in here too and what that could be is potentially if you know that you spend i don't know roughly 600 pound a year on vehicle mot's and repairs you can stick that in there also now what does that do so with the pricing strategy that i'm going to teach you here today we need to know the total yearly cost of everything so as you can see at the top i've got two columns i've got monthly and yearly and that's literally just because you might only know the monthly figure so for instance my monthly insurance figure here is 454 pounds but i know that i pay 300 pound a year for my phone now if we scroll to the bottom all i've done is added up all those cells in the monthly and times that by 12 because there's 12 months in the year and then i've added up those two columns so everything i've got in my monthly and everything i've got in my yearly and that has given me my total and as you can see i've done that on both the fixed and variable cost now you might think i'm waffling a little bit however this is the most important part about tying down your pricing strategies now personally our businesses looks a lot different to this we've literally tried to dial down every single cost this is why i've left these boxes so large in order for you to literally just fill out every cost that you can think of within your business the more you dial this down the more profit you will find within your business okay so we've got our total costs here and then what i've done is i've created an area on the right hand side as you can see where it says breakdowns in order for you to dial stuff down for your business now this is going to be a lot different if you're self-employed and you're only operating on your own as opposed to if you've got employees this part here needs to be a breakdown of your business and not what you want to work if that makes any sense so for example if I've got two other employees that can continue the work when I go on holiday or if I'm ill, then what we want to do is break down the actual business days and business hours we are working. So let's jump back to the computer screen right now. And as you can see on my breakdowns, I've picked that I want the business to be working 48 weeks of the year. So that's essentially four weeks for holiday, maybe two for the festive season. Due to the work we conduct, the other two weeks maybe for poor weather. And then I've aimed that we're going to work five days a week. And now this is the important bit, your working hours. So this isn't the working hours where you're actually 
at work, on site, this is everything. From the minute you or your team get to the yard to the minute you get home and you're clocking off. This has to be the working hours, not the billable hours. So yes, you might be on site for three hours on that day, let's say, but you might have spent another two hours either going to the builder's merchants or refueling kit. You need your total working hours in that day and stick by it. So I've got 10 scheduled working hours for that day. Now, as you can see here in billable time, all I've worked out is the billable hours for that year. So I've got my 10 working hours per day times by my five working days per week, which is then times by my 48 weeks per year. That's given me a total of 2,400 billable hours for that year. And again, I am going to give you the opportunity to download this spreadsheet. So if you are using my spreadsheet, all you have to do there is edit it yourself. So say you want to work 50 hours for the week, all that will change. And again, if you want to work six days a week at 12 hours, all of this stuff will change. You can see that that's already jumped up to 3,600 billable hours for that year. OK, so now if we work our way down, we can see our total costs now that total cost there on the right hand side is literally our total variable costs plus our total fixed costs now this should include everything within your business what i'd probably advise is going through your bank statements and deciding whether it's a variable or a fixed cost and sticking it in those columns and if you're starting to see trends such as fuel so the reason why i can put fuel in there is because on average last year we were spending around 1400 pounds a month just on fuel. So I can stick that in there, knowing that that's a pretty good average for our business and that can go in variable costs because the price of fuel goes up and it goes down and it's to be monitored. Again, with workers' wages, workers' wages can either increase or decrease. If they're on a salary, you can give them a pay rise or if they're paid per hour, obviously their hours could decrease. So I would monitor that and adjust as necessary. Right, so then what I've done is I've figured out our total cost as just explained, and then I've worked out the costs per week, per day, and per hour. And the way I've done that is literally taken our total cost, divided it by the amount of weeks we want to work. So again, that will change if I type in 45 there, by the amount of days we want to work, and by the amount of hours we want to work. So you can see there that our cost per hour is £36.55. Please note that this pricing strategy is excluding taxes and VAT, and I've got it in big letters there, so hopefully you don't miss that. Now, this is the important bit, our profit margin. What profit margin do you want to take? Every business is gonna be different, you might have different profit margins for your materials and that's fine but today we're just talking about for your time what do you want to mark your time up at compared to your cost so as an example here i put 70 percent we can drop that down to 45 and that will adjust our pricing as necessary but i'm going to go ahead stick that back to 70 for the purposes of this so now we've got this we can introduce our first pricing strategy which could be our hourly rate pricing strategy so the hourly rate pricing strategy is as it says you're charging that customer an hourly rate for your services this is one of my least favorite pricing strategies and i'll tell you for why later on in the video so as you can see here i've broke down our costs up above and then to get our weekly rate, all I've done is divided our weekly costs by 100 and then times them by 100 plus our profit margin. And I've done the same with the day rate and the hourly rate. So that would leave us with an hourly rate of £62.13 excluding VAT. And that is what I would charge the customer at. So an eight hour job, we would be charging at £497.06. Now, why don't I like the hourly rate? Now, the reason why I don't like the hourly rate strategy is because your customer is going to be clock watching. If you tell your customer that you charge £62 an hour, they're going to be sat there going, hang on a minute, you've only been here an hour, I'm only giving you 62 quid. What they haven't seen is that time that you've took to go to the builder's merchant, to refuel all the admin work behind the job and all of that is completely lost. So that brings me on to pricing strategy number two. Pricing no strategy number two is simple. Is the job gonna take you half a day or a full day? And that's where you introduce the pricing strategy of day rate. So if it's a large job, you give them a day rate. And as you can see here, our day rate is £745.59. 
Now, bear in mind that this is for free employees, so you could really dial this down and work out what it's gonna be per employee. And I have actually done that on ours, so I might leak that spreadsheet for you as well. Or if it's a simple job that's only gonna take you half a day, you could simply divide that 745 pound by two and squeeze two of those jobs in per that day. Now, the reason why this pricing structure is great is it still gives you that leverage time for the non-billable hours within your day for going to the builders merchants, for refueling the vehicles and for doing your admin work. Because remember, you might be on site for eight hours a day, but you're charging the customer for 10 hours of your day using this method. It's a really clear and concise way of pricing things because your customer knows where they stand. Also, if you tell them, look, we're gonna charge you half a day for this job because of X, Y, and Z, if it runs over or it's a little bit quicker, it doesn't matter. You don't even need to tell them that it's half a day rate, you can just say this job is gonna be this much, yes or no. And I believe that's the easiest way to price things in order to in start introducing profitability within your business. Oh God, <sighs> who knew I could talk so much? As you know, we're a grounds maintenance business and we like to measure every site, every little inch that needs maintaining, and then we can work out either our acreage or our square meter. Now, if you're a tradesman watching this video, don't run away yet because this still can be used for the likes of maybe plumbers or builders. Just bear with me and you'll see in a second. So let's jump straight back onto the screen. As you can see here, I've got acres or square meters. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna jump into the square meters because there might be other service-based businesses that could easily relate to square meters rather than acreages. So as you can see here, it's not a lot different. In fact, our costs and variable costs are all laid out the same. And I would say, make sure that you're transferring all your fixed cost and variable costs throughout the sheet into the different tabs you can see below. The only difference is, is when we scroll down, as you can see here, I've listed all our equipment. So I've got our 52 inch stander, I've got a Hustler Super 104 down, the tractor, a wee bang, strimmer and a leaf blower. And then I've worked out how many square meters that equipment can produce per hour. Now, as you can see with the wide area stuff, that's a lot easier to do in acres. I've worked out that a Hustler can do 8.4 acres per hour. If we jump back to square meters, that's a big number. Now you're probably wondering how I've worked that out. Now there's two ways. You either time yourself for an hour whilst you're using the kit, and figure out how many square meters you manage to accomplish with that kit. Or you can go onto the manufacturer's website, check out the technical specifications and just list that. But I prefer to do a real world view. So go out there for an hour, figure out how much space you actually did with that machine and get it listed. And now, as you can also see, I've monitored how much fuel that piece of equipment is also using per hour. And then I've worked out my costs per square meter. Now I'm just gonna jump over to acres on this just to make it a little bit more clearer for the wide area mowers that we've got. But as you can see there, my cost per acre for the 52 inch standard is 30 pounds, 26 pence. And the way I've worked this out is, I've added my fuel cost per hour and an hourly rate, and I've then divided that by the amount of acres it can do an hour if that makes any sense at all. But yes, basically the formula I've developed has created a cost per acre. And again, you can change all of this to whatever you want. So I could pick their rake if I wanted to, and I could say that the rake does 100 acres per hour, and that will go into the bottom there. And you can see that my cost per acre is 84 pence for that. So that all changes. So then we've got our cost per acre on the left hand side, and then I've worked out our price per acre. And the way I've done that is divided our cost by 100 and times it by 100 plus our profit margin. And I've also added the hourly rate on as well. Now, the reason why I've already added the hourly rate on as well, because if I didn't, we'd be pricing that acre for around 30 pound an hour for say the tractor, but we haven't done is set aside that time for the operator to sit on it as well. So basically I've added it, added in not only the costs per acre for the equipment, but also the operator. And that comes down here on the right as well. 
Now with this spreadsheet, you can get a good idea of how I'm doing things and how I'm working things out. And please do feel free to create your own spreadsheet. However, if you don't want to go to the effort of creating your own spreadsheet and you like the look of mine, you can download mine on our Etsy shop. It's £1.80. I'm sorry that it has to cost money. But as you can imagine, I'm going to have to manually send out these spreadsheets to everyone. So there has to be a cost to it as I am running a business. However, I will leave the link for the digital download on our Etsy store in the description. I just want to thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this video has made sense and helped some of you. If you do have any questions at all, feel free to put them in the comments or alternatively, you can email me at jack at cutcrew.co.uk and I will get back to you. I just want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you have liked it, make sure you check out our other content. Hit that subscribe button and the like button or let us know what video content you want us to bring you in the future. Again, people, thank you so much for watching. My name's Jack from Cut Crew Limited. Have a great day and go out there and smash your profitability and start pricing for the time and space that you should be. You can click here to go to our website, here to subscribe, here to watch our video series Behind the Blade or here to watch a video that YouTube thinks you might like.